viewing is from 10 to 11. Um, and I've been informed by the family it will not be an open casket. So the only time to view the remains uh, will be from 10 to 11. Um, I think that's all I have. I'm going to move out of the way because uh, we have an awesome, dynamic uh, preacher teacher. Amen. None other than Pastor Matthew Davis. Amen. Let's go to God. Eternal God in heaven, it's in Jesus' name we come, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. God, we thank you again for this privilege to come to worship you, to praise you, to honor you, Father God. Now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins and bless us, Father, that we will walk with you and that you will speak to us. Lord, we ask you to keep all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Giving honor to God our Father, to Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior, to the Holy Spirit, our leader, our teacher, our comforter, and our guide. It's just good to be here at the Good Hope, New Hope Church one more time. The Good New Hope Church one more time. Amen. The place where God has his name and the place where God is, is dwelling in the midst. Amen. Uh, you are paired off, correct? You have partners that you paired off with, husbands or with wives. And tonight we will do a short demonstration. Then you will begin to demonstrate. Amen. 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 Look at how you're looking at me. Look at, look at how you're looking. You ought to see how you're looking. If you, are not, if you do not have a partner from last week, raise your hand and we will make sure you have a partner. We have two people sitting right there together. They will be partnering together. Anybody else that does not have a partner? Anyone else? Okay, he doesn't have a partner. Okay, she's partnering with her. Anybody? Okay, if you were assigned a partner and your partner is not here, you can maintain that partner. We won't get, get to you tonight. But if you... If you do not have a partner, let me know if you do not have a partner. Everybody has a partner. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did anybody look over their homework assignment? Did anybody figure out what partnering means? Did anybody open their book in the last week? <laughs> you are in church. You in the you in the Lord's house. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Did anybody think about evangelism last week? I know Pastor Stearns thought about it because he presented, and uh, they said that he did a dynamic message in presenting uh, here in this area. Amen. So evangelism is where we are. Evangelism is what we're talking about. What is evangelism? What is evangelism? One person at a time. The good news. Sharing the gospel. This side has it. This side has it. Evangelism. Sharing the gospel. Sharing the good news. And you do know we need some good news, right? We need some. Anybody need any more good news? Can you, you have all the good news you can stand? Raise your hand. We need some good news, don't we? We get bad news every single day of our lives. We need, we need some good news. So how many chapters have we, we covered so far? Let me try let me try this again. How many chapters in the book? How many P's are there to effective evangelism? And those five P's are Oh, y'all smart over here on the south side. Y'all smart. Okay? So when we talk about uh, the five P's, which P is the very most important one? Prepare. Why is it most important? I'm not understanding. Yes, ma'am. What? If I had a dollar, my wife didn't let me give you get a dollar today. I was going to give you a dollar. Yes, ma'am. Over in the corner.
Amen. You have to be prepared to share, right? So you have to know something that you need to share, right? Let's look at page number two right quick. Page number two all the way back to the front of the book. Page number two. Page number two. Not Roman number two, but page number two. Not Roman number two, but page number two. Okay? Right, the last full paragraph, before you get to the word remember, it gives us the reasons why we should share the gospel. There are reasons, there are many others other than these four, but there are reasons why we should be sharing the gospel. There are reasons, and you don't have to be a call preacher. Amen? I told you in the first session, a brother came to me and said, I've been up all night long. The Lord been bothering me. I saw he was where he was headed with it. He said, oh, I think I'm being called. Yeah, you're being called to get your life right with God. Amen? Amen. You want the people to focus on Jesus, not on you, right? So we got to have a life that's in coordination with God, with godliness. Okay, so the reason why we should share, number one is God commands us to. Matthew chapter 28 and Acts chapter 1 says that we are to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And it's not a request. It's not a suggestion. God commands us to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Number two, we ought to have a great desire to, sh to, to assist others to go to heaven and to go to him. Amen? We ought to have a great desire. You should never tell anybody to go to hell. You know Christian should ever tell anybody to go to hell. If you've done that, do, do not raise your hand, go into the secret closet and ask God to forgive you for it. No born-again believer, no Christian should ever tell anybody to go to hell. It is your responsibility to make sure people stay out of hell. It is your responsibility to make sure you introduce them to Jesus Christ so they can avoid hell. So as angry as you may get, you should never say, go to hell. So stop even thinking it. God even knows your thoughts. And every idle thought, every idle word shall be brought into the judgment. And it's a terrible thing when you hear women and, and men in, in the grocery store cussing their children out. I mean, just flat cuss them out, call them all kind of names and tell them all where they, where they are no good for anything. Let me tell you, what you tell children is what they will believe. And so you have to tell them, according to Psalm 139, you are beautifully and wondrously made. Great are the handiworks of God, and this I know right well. So it's not our responsibility to send people to hell, to invite them to hell, or tell them to go to hell. It is our responsibility to make sure we assist people to make it to heaven. What's the next one? We sharpen our skills every time we witness. Every time we do it, we learn something different. When I was when I was the evangelism minister at the Homer Street Baptist Church in Third Ward, I mean Third Ward, Houston, Texas. I would go down on the corner, sit with the winos, because they got every excuse in the world why they didn't follow Jesus. And every time I sit with them and I talk to them, they gave me another uh, a route to take to invite them to Christ. Some people say, I don't go to church and I don't believe in Jesus and I don't believe in religious activity because there's so many hypocrites there. But when I went to Kroger's the other day, I saw some hypocrites there. When I went to the family reunion, I saw some hypocrites. When I went to the baby shower, I saw some hypocrites. When I went to the game, I saw some hypocrites. People still going everywhere else, but they don't want to go to church because they're hypocrites. Isn't that a shame? Any excuse will do. And let me just, just tell you this. God the Father... The devil himself and COVID are the three most lied on entities in the world today. God told me, the devil made me, 
and COVID keeps me from doing it. And we only use those excuses when it comes to church. God told me that preacher ain't feed me. And they, they stop going to church completely. The devil with the word of God. Page 63. The soul winner is one who gives off consultation. When you go to the pharmacy and when you go there, there's a place where you go to consult with the pharmacist. You don't want to consult with the pharmacy tech. You want to consult with the pharmacist. Are you with me? So if you are a soul winner, you're going to be the consultant. And you are never the doctor. You will never be the doctor, but you tell the person what the doctor will do for you. So as a nurse and personalized, you prepare the patient, the atmosphere, and for the appointment with the doctor. When you go to, when I used to go to the doctor, they don't do this anymore because doctoring ain't the same anymore. That's terrible English. Doctoring is not the same anymore. When I used to go to the doctor, I went to Dr. Williams, and when I went to Dr. Williams, there's a little short lady they call Sam. She would meet me at the door. Hello, Mr. Davis, and she was bouncing on her toes, and, and she would always greet me well. Hello, Mr. Davis, you're here to see the good doctor? I said, yes, I'm here to see the good doctor. I went there to see Sam. I, I came to see the doctor. But Sam set the atmosphere. And then she would walk in the room, she would take my blood pressure, and before she leaves the room, she would let me see her pull the old paper off the bed and tear it up and put it in there to make sure that I saw that she's putting new paper in just for me. She was setting the atmosphere. She greeted me with a smile. She took my blood pressure with a smile. She had wholesome conversation, but she understood she wasn't the doctor. She knew she would never be the doctor. She just set the atmosphere for incoming of the doctor. And all of a sudden, the white coat showed up. And the moment the white coat showed up, guess what? I started feeling better right away because if there's going to be any hope for me, it's going to show up by the man in the white coat. So it's our place to set the atmosphere. It's our place to get the mind right. It's our place to make sure we introduce the people to the doctor. That's why praise and worship is such a serious thing, y'all. It's serious for the folk up here and for the folk out here. It sets the stage for the incoming of the word. The doctor is getting ready to be presented through the man of God. I tell a lot of people, stop spending time acting like you're running for mayor, shaking everybody's hand, talking to everybody. But the last 15 minutes, you ought to have your mind and your heart set on hearing from the doctor. We need to hear from the doctor. It's the doctor that can heal us. It's the doctor that can keep us. So we are here to set the atmosphere for the great physician. His name is Jesus. So we're just a nurse. We're setting the atmosphere for the doctor. I'm at the bottom of page 63. The soul winner must create an atmosphere in which the patient understands that he or she is not alone. Sin is common to all of us. According to, according to Romans 3 and 23, sin is common to all of us. We all have sin, not y'all have sin. We all have sin. And guess what? We all still sinning. Somebody's sinning right now. How long he going to stand up there tonight? Show the patient. Show the patient. Show the patient that you're concerned. I'm going to page 64. Show the patient that you're concerned about his or her well-being. Show the patient that you're concerned. The patient doesn't need to know how much you know. The patient needs to know how much you care. The patient needs to know you're concerned about his or her health. In this case, the spiritual health. 
Now, 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 Sam may have gone back in the back room and sit down and drink coffee, but when she left me by myself, I felt like she had set the atmosphere. And then she talked well. She talked good. She talked excellent about the doctor. Let me just put this in here. You have to make sure that you talk up your church. You have to make sure you talk up your pastor. You have to make sure you talk up the pastor's wife. Because people looking at you when you're talking down your church, your pastor, your pastor's wife, they wonder, well, why are you still there? Back home, they would say it like this in the woods. They would say it like this. You want me to think it's raining outside when you really TTing on my leg. They don't say it just like that, though. What, 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 what the world is saying, what the world is saying, you over here accumulating information against the church, against the pastor, against the pastor's wife, against the pastor's children, and you still hanging out there. And you want me to come over there, and you ain't believing in it yourself. And you want me to think it's raining outside. Walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Be sure to yield yourself to the Holy Spirit. Be sure the word of God is in your heart and in your life. Demonstrate God's word through your life. Psalms 119 and 11. Hide the word of God in your heart. Because... All of us are at the border of being tricked by the devil. Let me tell you something. 50 minus 5 president, 50 minus 5 wanted us to think that Mexico going to pay for a wall. People not climbing over walls, they going through tunnels. <laughs> I mean, El Chapo been going, got a whole tunnel. I mean, got a whole highway under the ground. And we talking about billions upon billions of dollars that we're going to throw at a, a fence. People not going over fence. They going through. I mean, why, why go over a fence when you can just smooth walk like the Israelites did on dry ground? You have to understand that when the word of God is in your heart, you can be one who can be in discernment. They can't get anything over on you. Be supportive. Realize and tell people that you were once caught in sin. And Jesus took you in. And be supportive of, so they can understand where you are and where they can be. So you have to understand where they are and, and realize and tell them that God delivered you. And because God has delivered me, baby, he can do the same thing for you. I mean, you got to make it personal sometimes. You got to get to a point where they understand that God is the key and God will deliver you. Be optimistic. There are too many people that are pessimistic in the church. What's the difference between optimistic and pessimistic? Is there a difference? One is positive, one is negative. Which one is positive? Be optimistic. I mean, one of the worst things at our church we call our ushers, our parking lot attendants, and our greeters, we call them first impressions. I mean, the lawn is cut, but these people are the first impression visitors get of our church. We ought not have visitors show up at any church that call themselves a Christian church. And folk get turned off by how you treat them. 
Be optimistic. Be upbeat. And, you know, sometimes you can go to fast food restaurants and you say, girl, you should have taken a day off. You sick today. <laughs> Tell your boss, I said you need a day off because you sick. I mean, they will drive you away and you judge that whole restaurant and the whole staff on that one person. Be optimistic. Be about kingdom building, not church building, because if you build the kingdom, the church will be built. And I'm not talking about the walls and the brick and model. I mean the people. You know, we, got, we have a small church, right? We have a small church. I mean, you all would pack our church out compared to what we have on Sunday, okay? And now that COVID <laughs> is another excuse, <laughs> we got 30% of what we used to have. But check this out. Every new first-time visitor, I ask them to fill out a visitor's card, and then I call them and ask them, what was your experience like? Did the woman at the back door with the white shirt on treat you right when you came through the door? You know the lady, the one that looks like she's 50, but she's really 75. How does she greet you? I mean, I'm taking a full survey. And when they point somebody out, I don't wait till next Sunday. We have to have a discussion. Because your optimism is what draws people in and pull them in. Uh, Rain, Tom, Tom Rayner says in his book, You Are Welcome Here, he talks about how you treat people who show up. You have to make sure you communicate a message that you are welcome here. You are welcome here. And then, please, ma'am, please, sir, I'm talking to folk 40 and up now. These seats don't belong to you. Even even if you got even if you got the seats from a pew rally, even if your big mom and them name is on the seat, they don't belong to you. If a if a a new person come in, let them have that seat. We talking about building the kingdom. Jesus talks about this, and Jesus talks about the fact that we need to understand that we will march celebrities down the aisle. If, if Beyonce came in here, if she came while I was up preaching, she needs to set herself in that first seat she gets to. And ushers, you all need to know, just because a person has notoriety, they don't have the responsibility, nor should they have the liberty of upsetting the whole sanctuary when they walk in the door. When, when, when I go to a church, if I get there late, I sit in the front seat, the first seat. The first seat there's not a body in. I'm going to sit down if I'm late because I'm not anybody. And people need to know. I mean, celebrities and, and politicians come to our church, and they just upset the thing. Then they go on to the next church. But if they let me get to the pulpit, they're going to have to sit and listen through the whole sermon. Be optimistic about God. Be a good Samaritan or a great American. Be a good Samaritan or a great American. Never refuse the opportunity to help somebody who needs healing from sin. Never refuse that opportunity. Look for opportunities to help somebody. Jesus is the only perfect one. He is the perfect Lamb of God without blemish. We got to point them to Jesus. The devil should have killed me while he had me. I got Jesus now, and that's enough. Everything else is water under the bridge. I'm on my way. Where the weeping shall cease from troubling. He is the Lamb of God. We need to keep our focus on the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
we have to keep our focus. Always tell Jesus' story. On page 65, be patient. Be patient with your patient. Remember how long God was patient with you. Remember what God went through with you. I'm not talking about you were out there doing all these things, but if you wasn't saved, you were still a, a good sinner. If you weren't born again, you were on your way to hell. You were just a good sinner, that's all. You fed the homeless, you didn't cuss old folk out, you were obedient to fans, but if you had not met Jesus, you still would be just a good old sinner. Be patient. Show patience toward others. The soul winner must remember how long God dealt with him and tolerated him. God is our only hope. God is our only hope. God is our only hope. Glorify the name of Jesus before men, and they will come believing and trusting in God. We got to show love, y'all. Now, I can't say that enough. We got to show love. And, and, and you have to even show love at home because you're being a witness at home. I tell, I tell women, if your husband doesn't come to church, you leave him alone. Introduce him to the brothers of the church. Let the brothers deal with your husband because he ain't heard from you the last 40 years. What make you think he going to hear from you now? Leave him alone. Paul says your chaste conversation, meaning your, your godly lifestyle, will lead him to the Lord. Now, let me talk to women and men who are not married. If there are signs that there's no Jesus, there is no Jesus. You ain't going to get him to Jesus. You ain't going to make him love Jesus. If, especially women, you need a man who can lead you. In the word of God. You need a man who can wrap his arms around you. And make life better for you. You don't need somebody that's going to take care of you. And then drop you like a hot potato. You need somebody who loves Jesus. and they, You don't need somebody that's still at the age of 35, 40 trying to find themselves. Love unconditionally don't put yourself in a bind just to be with somebody when the soul winner presents the gospel well the patient should feel the message is just for him or her have you ever left church on a sunday and you said boy it sounded like and it felt like i was the only person in the room that the preacher was preaching to and let me tell you sometime when you hear the word you ain't gonna walk out of here shouting you, I have heard the word of God, and before I get to get to the door, I was bleeding like Zorro had cut me up. <laughs> because not only was he on my street, he was on my block, he was in my house, he saw me where I went, and nobody told the preacher anything. So stop coming to the preacher talking about, who told you? The Holy Spirit told me. And it is not about the preacher. Don't get mad at him. Get mad at your sin. It's all, about, it's all about Jesus. So we need to make sure we personalize our presentation toward the gospel and the gospel only. The perfection of your walk is not the issue. I'm at the very last paragraph of the page. Your perfection is not the issue, but what is the issue is Jesus' perf Jesus' perfection. His perfection. He is the only one who, who, who's perfect. That's why we always tell people we point them back to Calvary. When, when a preacher comes to our church, and very few times this happens, when a preacher comes to our church, and if, if I'm out of town, first thing I hear when I make a call to any member, you know, Pastor, he didn't go to the cross. And they singing this song as he walk out the door, he won't be back, he won't be back no more, no more. No more. The important thing is the fact that Jesus died on Calvary. He was raised on the third day, and he's able to change your life. As a soul winner, we need to make sure that we introduce people to Jesus, 
Every time, our, doing our Bible study, doing our Sunday school, the last thing we say is come to Jesus. Our broadcast, we got more people on the broadcast than we, in the, we have in the pews. And chances are there are more unsaved people watching, watching our broadcast than said in the pews. So we're going to introduce them to Jesus as the last thing we do in Bible study. Now our Sunday school teachers, regardless of what room they're in, they are introducing people to Jesus Christ, giving them an opportunity to get to know him. So in your day-to-day -day walking, in your day-to-day -day living, you ought to be praying, Lord, give me a message to give to somebody that men, women will come to know Jesus as their Savior. Get to know Jesus. You're, you're going to point them to Jesus. You're going to be personal with them and know that you have to get them to Jesus. I'm closing off in page number 66. Then we'll do a short demonstration here. Uh, Pastor Charles Stanley, now the late Pastor Star Charles Stanley says that we ought, to, we ought to possess a passion for God. A passion, a love for God, enthusiasm for God, and a compassion for mankind. We ought to have a passion for God. We ought to love God so much and people ought to see that love flowing through us. The preachers in, that, that I hang out with, they got a joke that they always talk about. They say when you look at Matthew Davis, he's a pastor, but when you cut him, he bleeds evangelism. They say his DNA reads evangelism. So where did they get that? It's because we need to understand we ought to have a passion for what God has called us to do. And he's called every person in this room to evangelize for him i mean i mean regardless of where you are regardless of what you where you go regardless of what you do you ought to be called to evangelism as a matter of fact you are called because you can reach some people that won't hear the preacher you can you can reach some people that will never darken the doors but the fact of the matter is it's all about the fact that Jesus is Savior and he is Lord. Honey, let's do it. Let's go. So uh, we want to demonstrate how you and your partner are going to pair off right quick like. You and your partner is going to pair off. And uh, in the other session, you're going, to, you're going to lead one person to Christ. Amen? So I think you have a problem. What's your problem? Why should I go to church? Because the people in the church, they're hypocrites. They're doing the same thing that I'm doing out in the world. So why should I do that? Well, uh, I don't want to talk to you about going to church. Okay. I want to talk to you about Jesus. All right. About his salvation. What's the difference? The, the fact of the matter is Jesus died on the mm -hmm. He died for you and for me. And we can get to church later on. But if you were to die today, do you know where you would go? Probably to hell. <laughs> well, you don't have to go to hell. You can be saved right here, right now, on this corner. You can be made different well, how today. Did that happen? Because if you accept Jesus Christ into your life, you can be saved right here. What does that mean? You don't need a church. You don't need an organ. You don't need a preacher. You can be saved right here. What does that mean to be saved? To be saved means that, that God will wipe watch, watch, watch away your sins. If you believe that Jesus died for your sins and rose from the dead, God has made it so that you can join him in heaven when you die. So you're trying to tell me I'm that man tell. died and he rose again? I'm trying to tell you that Jesus died and he rose from the okay. dead. Jesus died, okay. His name is Jesus, he's God's only son, and he died and rose from the dead. And he didn't just die just to be doing this thing, he died so you can get to know him and that you can go to heaven. If it had not been anybody else on planet Earth but you, he would have died just to you. He loves you that much. The Bible even says, that, and I don't, I don't need to quote scripture, but the Bible does say that he died for you while you were yet a sin. He died for you while you were doing your own thing. He loves you so much until he wants you to join him in heaven. Have you ever heard of the four spiritual laws? No, I haven't. Well, law number one is that God loves you and offers a wonderful plan for your life. 
He loves you so much that Jesus died for you. Law number two says that you, as a person, are sinful and you're separated from God. God can't get to you. You can't get to God because there's a great gulf that separates you. And that gulf is sin. And not, law number three says that you must individually receive him as your personal Savior and he will come into your life. Mm -hmm. So my mama can't. Regardless of how well your mama played the piano, regardless of how much your mama sang, no matter how well she shot, you have to receive him for yourself. Would you like to receive Jesus Christ? Would you like to go to heaven when you die? You are going to die one day. And hell was made for somebody, but it wasn't made for you. And you can make sure that you can go to heaven. Will you bow your head and repeat after me? You believe the story that Jesus died for your sins, was buried in a bar tomb, and rose from the dead? Will you bow your head to me? Just read after me and say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you are the Son of God. Now come into my life. And come into my life. And make me a new person. And make me a new person. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. I believe that you rose from the dead. Thank you for saving my soul. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 You saved something. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So when you do your demonstration, you only have two and a half minutes. Amen. Two and a half minutes, and you're going to lead somebody to Christ. I got a story, and I'll leave you alone. Amen. Uh, my story is, the found, is found on page 129. You can't read it read along with me because I move pretty fast. Now, let me tell you, I was a preacher. At, at Homer Street, and what we did, we went to the Star of Hope. And when we went to the Star of Hope for some 12 years, I would just preach Jesus. Men would come to Christ, but I noticed there was a brother that always sat in the far back, like that brother sitting back there. See, he's sitting back there. He sit there every time I come. There was a brother sitting in the far back. <laughs> There was a brother sitting in the far back. He would never come up for altar call. He would never stand to receive Christ. So one day he came down the aisle after I had finished preaching. Jesus, death, burial, and resurrection for 12 years. He came down the aisle, not doing the altar call, but just walked up to me. He had tears in his eyes. He was streaming down, tears streaming down his face. And he said to me, for 12 years, I sit and watch you. And regardless of what the situation, you talked about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. He said, man, I was plotting on a way to kill you and not be found that I was the one that killed you. He said, I hated your guts because the only thing you talked about was Jesus. I got sick and tired of you talking about Jesus for 12 long years. I've been plotting for 12 years to take you out of here. I didn't know anything about it. I'm just talking about Jesus. He said, but today I finally come to the realization that Jesus can change my life. And I come before you right now, if you would lead me to Christ. And for 12 years, my life was in danger, and I didn't even know about it. But Jesus was working on him and ministering to him. He finally came down the aisle, and that night I led him to Christ. It was the homeless man witness. Keep clapping. Can we give Pastor Matthew Davis another hand for such an awesome presentation of his preparation? Amen. I want to thank him and his wife, Carolyn, for demonstrating um, that scenario for us. And we pray that um, not next Tuesday. Next Tuesday is the 4th. So we're going we, we're gonna to let y'all celebrate the 4th because I know... If we did have a uh, Bible study, there wouldn't be nobody here but uh, my wife, uh, Carolyn, and Matthew. <laughs> That's it. That's it. So, <laughs> so we want to celebrate just like y'all want to celebrate. <laughs> so uh, next Tuesday, uh, due to being the 4th of July, we will not have a Bible study. So that leave one more session. And so by that time, everybody should have their scenarios down. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, not prolonging the time. Any prayer requests or praise reports? Yes. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. Uh, pray for uh, Oscar Sanders. I want to pray for him. He had a fall. I did get a call from uh, his wife, Stella, and also shared with me that uh, he did have a, uh, a fall, that he's doing much better. But there are some things that they're still looking at to, to rule out some things. And so we're going to continue to keep him in our prayers. Any other prayer requests? Yes. Troy Hurst, amen, Troy Hurst will lift him up in our prayers. Any other? Mm -hmm. Whitney Robinson. Whitney Robinson will lift up in our prayers. Yes. Dora Simmons. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for that praise report. Yes. Amen. Melody Henderson. Amen. Melody Henderson will lift up in our prayer dealing with their moment of bereavement. Any other requests? Amen. Charlotte McGrew will definitely keep her in our prayers. Amen. Pray for the Scott family. Any other requests? The Thompson family. Amen. The Thompson family. Yeah, I, I think we can all take a consensus that we all stand in need of prayer. That's why the Bible tells us men ought to what? Always pray and never, ever give up. That's Denise. Amen. I want to pray for the Hicks family. Uh, having to put a loved one in hospice. I want to continue to keep them in our prayers. Amen. If nothing else, let us stand as we dismiss with prayer. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you <clears throat> once again for uh, you just a great demonstrator of your love to us and your love toward us. And God, we thank you that you did it uh, while we were yet sinners. So God, we thank you for that great demonstration of your love. And God, we pray now that every name that we're called, God, we <clears throat> lift them up to you right now. And God, we thank you because uh, we've discovered that there's no one like you. And because there's no one like you, God, that is why we come to you. We come to you, God, with a sense of urgency, knowing that, Father God, if you can't do it, it can't be done. So, God, we come to you because you said in your word, let our requests be made known unto you. And so we do that right now. We pray for all of the names that were called, those who are dealing with illnesses, Father God. We know that you are the great physician. Then, God, those who are dealing with bereavement, God, we know that you are God of comfort. And then, God, we pray for those, God, who are, 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 are recovering from surgery, God, and we know that uh, you are the one who gives healing. And so, God, we pray now that you will restore their body to wholeness, Father God. And then, God, we pray now for this class. We pray, God, for the uh, subject that was taught, evangelism. And, God, I pray now that for all of us who know about the good news, now we'll go out and share the good news because you have commissioned us to do so. And not only have you commissioned us to do so, but, God, you have equipped us to go out and tell a dying world that Jesus still lives. God, we thank you now, God, and we uh, give you all praise and we give you all the honor and the glory. And now, God, let us not just hold on to that for ourselves. 
you have already informed us that we ought to let our light shine and God, our light need to shine because we are living in a culture that has embraced darkness we are living in a society that celebrates darkness so it is time for us as believers it is time for us as Christians to let our light shine because it was you God that brought us out of the darkness into the marvelous light and we thank you for that light so let us not be stingy with that light but let us let that light shine we don't have to make it shine just let it shine so God, we thank you. Now, thank you for our teacher, uh, him and his wife. God, we pray that you continue to not protect them from the evil one, but deliver them from the evil.